he covered me from my knees to my breath with heavy bruises. The entire back of my thighs and my rear end were jet black. But regardless, I couldn't go to the police. I would have to confess to being a prostitute. And criminalization caused this. I have no recourse. I didn't even go to the hospital because I couldn't explain it. I couldn't explain. I mean, it was ob obvious to anybody that it was a sexual assault and a bad one. This happens to a lot of us. and. And as long as I'm a sex worker, as long as anybody's a sex worker, anybody, this can happen to any of us. And that's really what it being illegal does. Um, for anybody who thinks that they're protecting society, the only people who are protected by criminalization are predators. I have been beaten before. I have been drugged in cars. I've had my stuff vandalized. I've had things stolen from me. Uh, I have been um, drug out of the car. I have been, um, you know, left on the side of the road, uh, smacked, beaten, um, bloody noses. Uh, my throat was slit one time. Um, I was buried, buried alive, you know, after that. Um, I have just been cut, uh, raped. Um, this one here was uh, trying to get away from a guy who had just raped me in his car, and I was trying to get away, and I kicked the windshield out of his uh, out of his car, and somehow or other a piece of glass cut me across my arm there. People I know who've been drugged by uh, a glass of water, and they don't see it poured, they drink it, they wake up a day later. For men, reporting rape is met with enormous challenges. We see people in the hospital who uh, have been pretty severely beaten. We see burn marks from cigarettes. Uh, really, we, we see we see uh, you know signs of torture with a lot of people, and we have and we know that some people don't survive these these acts of violence that are done against them while they're doing their sex work. There were a lot of women that, that was getting uh, taken away from other areas. They was finding them in other areas dead. In the last two years here, we've had if I'm not mistaken, five transgender people murdered. We just had um, one of the girls that I'm, I was very fond of um, murdered right down the street from here, actually not even two minutes from here um, by a 17, eight, 17 18 year old kid, um, picked her up, had sex with her, then tried to rob her. Um, she fought, he shot her in the head. So many people have gotten hurt and they were doing things like maybe working at night, maybe helping somebody out, you know, or just existing. You know what I'm saying? And it's sad that they're not here anymore. So it's so touchy to me because those people wish they had an answer for why someone killed them. Regardless of how you end up in sex work, don't let anybody tell you that you're any less of a person. The violence that happens to them while they're doing sex work, they don't deserve it. And they and they need to they need to recognize that. And that's part of the community support and empowerment that we want to provide to them is knowing that they never ever deserve to be to have violence against them. They always deserve to be safe no matter what they're doing, no matter where they are. No woman, no man, you don't no matter what you're doing, you do not deserve to be beaten, stabbed or left for dead. That's just insane. Spiritual trauma is also really common because a lot of, especially in the South, a lot of sex workers are from religious denominations and faith 
or spiritual folks and it's really damaging to their psyche um, when you know they are the victims of violence but oftentimes they may feel that they were deserving of it because they chose a field that's not correct with their faith and oftentimes leads to more inner conflict which will lead to self-medication oftentimes with drugs and alcohol which then puts people more at risk for future violent situations so that's something I'm really really concerned about there are some great programs in the south that have used people of faith to go out and do outreach and talk to people about how you know this isn't the end of the world this there are opportunities for um, you to keep doing this if that's what you want to do um, and be okay with your faith there are ways to you know you know a lot of folks are like God understands that you got to do what you got to do to take care of your family and if this is what you got to do this is what you got to do until you're ready for the next step or you know till whatever happens in the future so um, but it is a really tough thing for individuals to navigate because um, it is a very complex issue and a lot of people won't go there. Where they do go is telling people not to do it, but that's not an option if you have a child to feed. Just because you are selling yourself for whatever reason, you still have rights. I'm a person. I deserve to live too. It just give me that respect. I would say to utilize a buddy system, uh, try to be out on the streets with a partner, see if you can get a, a John with a partner, see, make sure that they see uh, what car you're going in, see if they can get the license plate. Hopefully y'all both have got cell phone numbers so you can check in on each other. Always let somebody, uh, other female, know where you're going. Uh, I know that I used to get into a vehicle and my girlfriend that was a couple blocks down the road, she would notice the make and model color of the car for me, just to, you know, just in case I didn't come back. I believe in um, trying to get the girls to understand that even if they don't get along, that they're all in this together and they need to look out for each other. Use the buddy system, tell somebody, you know, I have this client coming, I'm going to text you when you get, before he gets here, I'm going to text you when he leaves have a safe code, you know, I've got a safe word code with a friend that I can trust, we, we have it with each other that if I send her that code, that means call the police. You need to let somebody know where you're at, so there's also issues around having a network of people or a person uh, or some kind of system where you're notifying people of your location. Listen to your intuition. If anything raises a red flag, walk away. You don't ever need the money that bad. Always, always trust your instincts. Um, if you don't feel safe, don't get in the vehicle. If something looks sketchy, it's not worth the money. I had some experiences where I just felt like the guy was going to hurt me, and so I wouldn't go with him. So I'm... I'm for whatever reason, I listened to my gut on a number of levels, except that one particular night when I was really messed up. One tip I would say is to not be super high and do sex work. It is not good to go to your job as an accountant intoxicated. It's really not good to go to your job in the sex industry intoxicated. I don't tell people not to use because sometimes you got to use to do the job. Just be mindful that you're at a state where you can work and make decisions. So if alcohol is your drug of choice, then only take a couple drinks if a couple drinks is all you can handle. If you do a stimulant just to use an amount where you can still make clear and concise decisions. Uh, the ones I get really concerned about is when people take downers. Uh, when you take downers, it really affects your ability to make decisions, um, especially not if you're taking a light amount of downers, but a heavy dose of downers, such as a lot of oxycodone or if you take a lot of heroin more than your standard dose it's going to affect your ability to make clear and concise life changing decisions where uh, you may make a decision where you're more likely to be in a situation of violence. When you're getting in that car take a look in the back seat make sure that there's nobody else in that car. I try very hard to get hotel rooms that face the parking lot so I can see who's walking in. 
go to a familiar spot, go to a motel room that you already have a maybe an established relationship with uh, that motel. Having a bag ready, of course, is very important. And in that bag, you should really have a collection of things that you need, um, whether they're security stuff, whether they're sexual safety stuff, like condoms and lubricant, um, whether they're like a couple bucks if you need to get a cab someplace, if anything should go awry. Um, you know, having having a, having a bag that you know is available to you to just grab and go in any emergency case um, is, is incredibly valuable. One that I really recommend is you carry a couple tools on you, um, and that would be a whistle and mace. I have mace with me. I also have WD-40, the lubricant, um, because that works better than mace. Make sure that clothing-wise you are dressed to be attractive, obviously, but also so that you can run if you need to. Make sure that your clothing is safe. Wear shoes that you, if you're wearing high heels, that they're high heels you can easily peel off to run. Wear tennis shoes uh, so that you can get away. Heels, heels may look pretty, but if you're in a situation, you really can't run and get away with heels. Set your price higher rather than lower. The price yourself out of the market for a lot of them. That even though you lose some business. The more dangerous clients tend to go for the lower price girls. Make sure that you set your guidelines and time limits and get your money up front. Get the money up front and put it someplace that's hard for them to get to. That way you can throw them out, get it behind you. Always make sure to get your money up front because if you've got to take off, then at least you're getting paid for the contact. When you're screening your dates, one of the things that's really important if you do have access to the internet is there are some national bad date sheets and to look the individuals up to see if they're on that or not. There's bad client databases that once you establish yourself as a provider and can document that you're a legitimate provider, you can access, some are free, some you have to pay for, um, and they're essentially bad client lists, um, which you can both you know, background check somebody or you can add them. Um, a lot of times I've had success just by googling a phone number. It will either tell me who they are or sometimes it will immediately pop up. That phone number will pop up by itself in Google on the, on the National Escort database, the blacklist, and that's it. Um, but I will not give them my exact location until I'm positive that I want to see them. We started the North Carolina Bad Dateline, and it's just a place where individuals can uh, go and look up who's a bad date, who should I not uh, trick with, who should I not be with, because they are a potential source of violence. Um, it's a way to get the word out there that you know you can be safe, you can get rid of bad predators off the street, you can, you know, give hope and faith to your fellow sex workers that we're looking out for each other. So it's just a great opportunity to take care of each other in North Carolina, which is what we do best. When I hug a lady who's been so strung out on crack that she weighs 97 pounds, and I hug her, and I can feel her, you know, and I tell her that I love her, and I do, I remember how I used to be and how I craved somebody to tell me that it was going to be okay. So it helps me. I just hope that what I do makes a difference somehow, some way. I would like no one to go through what I have. And ultimately that is my objective. And if they have, I would like them to have access to resources that I do not. And that's the goal of my work. The violence has to stop.